Liberio Melito, otherwise known as Louis Melito, was born on April 26, 1942, to Sicilian immigrants and raised in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York. In his youth, Melito would often carry out petty crimes and would eventually become a member of a street gang known as the Rampers. Melito was a small man, only standing at five foot seven inches, but was very muscular. In his twenties, Melito worked as a hairdresser at the Lou Art Beauty Salon. According to Melito's wife Linda, Louis was an exceptionally skilled hairdresser, and she would always have him style her hair for her. To quote a passage from Linda's book Mafia Wife, Louis had a real talent as a hairdresser, and I think he could have made a good career out of it. He knew how to make women look and feel their best. During this time, Melito was also involved in numerous criminal activities, notably trunking, which was the act of breaking into people's car trunks and stealing any valuables inside before selling them on the black market. Melito also ran a lucrative stolen car ring and was a very skilled lock picker, picking the locks on phone booths and stealing the change. Melito would sometimes force his wife to act as a lookout while he was picking phones. In the mid-1960s, Melito began working for the Gambino crime family. Melito was very close to Gambino captains John Rizzo Sr. and Salvatore Tato Orello, both of whom would mentor Melito into the cold-blooded hitman he would eventually become. It was during this time that Melito allegedly murdered Jerry the Hawk, who was a Gambino associate and drug dealer, whom the family believed could not be trusted. It is generally agreed upon that the killing of Jerry the Hawk was Melito's first murder. Melito was an avid gun and hunting enthusiast, even taking his wife on numerous hunting trips during their honeymoon in Florida. Melito was also very superstitious, avoiding ladders, black cats, and would always wear Italian good luck horns around his neck to, according to his wife, ward off evil spirits. In the early 1970s, Melito started his own car company called Melito's Cars, Inc. In 1974, Melito, along with Sammy Gravano, Larry Martieri, and Alexander Aliboy Cuomo were all indicted for the 1970 murders of the Dunn brothers. However, the case was dismissed after the main witness for the prosecution was found to be unreliable. According to his wife Linda, Louis was very soft-spoken, sweet, and would often surprise her with gifts like flowers, chocolates, and jewelry. He would also show unrelenting love for his children, taking them on trips, showering them with gifts, and had a great sense of humor, always telling jokes. However, Melito's persona would many times switch from kindness to pure viciousness, almost as quickly as switching on a light. According to the book Mafia Wife, Melito would often hit his wife and threaten to murder her if she ever left him. On one occasion, while Linda was in the hospital recovering from a stomach ulcer, she asked Melito for a divorce, and to quote directly from Mafia Wife, Melito's response was, You say that word one more time, he said, and he was very calm about it, and I'll put you in a box ten feet under and tell your father you ran off with some guys to South America. He could make a threat like that, and the next minute put his arms around me and say that the best thing that ever happened to him was meeting me and how sorry he was about everything I had gone through. One time, while Melito's children were playing outside, Melito chased after a carpenter he had hired with an axe, slicing a piece of his ear off. Another time, after learning from his son that a firecracker had gone off in the face of one of his friends, Melito went to the man who sold his son the firecrackers and beat him almost to death with a baseball bat right in front of his son and his friends. Melito was very close to eventual Gambino boss Paul Castellano, admiring him immensely as a man with old-fashioned values. Castellano loved Melito equally, treating him like his own son. Apparently, when Sammy Gravano was to be transferred for the Colombo family to the Gambinos, Castellano, who was at the time a captain, was opposed to it, as he did not trust Gravano. However, Melito, who had been Sammy's best friend and partner in crime since their childhood days in the Rampers, defended him, and apparently was ultimately the one who convinced Castellano 
as well as Tato Arello, to allow Gravano into the family. Upon Gravano's entry into the Gambinos, he and Melito remained close, carrying out crimes together almost on a daily basis. Gravano had Melito participate in some of his most high-profile murders, notably the killing of rogue Philly mob capo Johnny Keyes Simone in 1980 and businessman Frank Fiala in 1982. Melito had a reputation for being fiercely loyal to his friends, especially Gravano. To quote from Mafia Wife, Louis had known Sammy for years and always felt the need to look out for him. Louis brought Sammy in on jobs for John Rizzo Sr., stealing the repaired jewelry from John Rizzo Sr.'s customers. This helped Sammy make a name for himself with the Gambinos. In the early 1980s, Melito loaned Gravano a substantial amount of money to purchase his horse farm in Crumville, New Jersey. Melito also took Sammy in as a partner in a steel firm he owned known as Gem Steel. Melito was so loyal to Gravano that he even hit his own wife after she made a crack about Sammy not being trustworthy. According to Mafia Wife, Melito would always say, quote, Linda, I don't want to hear that. You will not go around disrespecting Sammy. Melito also worked extensively with Gambino soldier and eventual captain Roy DeMeo in his auto theft ring, as Melito would often sell DeMeo stolen cars with fake titles, which DeMeo would then ship to Puerto Rico. Around 1982, Melito and Gravano's relationship began to complicate, as Paul Castellano, Melito's mentor, began expressing vocal disapproval of Melito's best friend. According to Mafia Wife, Melito would say, quote, Paul's got it in for Sammy. I don't know what to tell him. I'm not sure what he's getting at. He keeps asking me questions I can't answer. Today it was, what the fuck is Sammy doing? Why is he keeping everything? Keep Sammy away from here. We can't trust him. Don't bring him to the house. How do we know he's not a fucking rat? According to Melito's wife, Louis himself began sharing some of Castellano's grievances, as he had gotten shafted on a number of deals Gravano convinced him to go in with him on, including the Plaza Suite, the horse farm, and a restaurant that ultimately closed only a few months after it opened. At the same time, Gravano himself was angry with Melito, as he felt he had backdoored him after Melito ended his Shylocking business with Gravano and instead partnered with Tommy Bellotti at the request of Castellano. Melito had also partnered with Bellotti on a number of other rackets during this time. For Gravano, Melito aligning himself with Castellano and Bellotti over him felt like a betrayal. In 1984, Melito pleaded guilty to tax evasion and would serve two years in prison. While Melito was in prison, his boss, Paul Castellano, would be murdered on the orders of John Gotti with the backing of his best friend, Gravano. According to Melito's wife, it was no secret how close Louis was to Castellano, and Melito made it clear that he did not agree with taking him out. In fact, according to his wife, Melito may have been killed along with Castellano and Bellotti had he been on the street at the time of the takeover. While Melito was in prison, another tragedy struck, as his son Louis was nearly killed in an ATV accident. While Louis did survive the crash, he nearly lost his left leg and would be in serious pain for the rest of his life. Melito was released from prison in the fall of 1986, and when he came back to the Gambinos, he was brought into an entirely restructured family. Frank DiCicco, who had become underboss following the Castellano hit, had planned to murder Melito when he got released from prison because he felt he could not be trusted. However, DiCicco would end up being killed himself in a car bomb while Melito was still imprisoned, and after DiCicco's death, Gotti and Gravano decided that Melito would not be killed. Instead, they would, quote, put Melito on the shelf, meaning relegating him to running a few small rackets in Staten Island. As Gravano put it, Melito would stay there in his small little circle, mind his own business, and would not be allowed to expand. If he did those things, Gravano promised he would not kill him. However, Melito apparently could not accept this and openly voiced his disapproval of the new Gambino administration. Particularly, Melito was angry over being passed over in favor of Big Lou Valerio to head Gravano's crew following Gravano's ascension to consigliere of the family. Following this, Gravano went to Gotti and asked his permission to murder Melito, for which Gotti agreed. 
Gravano ordered Melito to meet him at Lou Valerio's club under the pretense of organizing the murder of Johnny Gamarano, who had been badmouthing Gotti. Upon Melito's arrival at the meeting, Gambino hitman John Carniglia shot Melito twice in the head with a silenced pistol. In the last few weeks of Melito's life, he expressed regret for the life he lived and the impact it had on his family. To quote from Mafia Wife, We were sitting at the kitchen table, and out of nowhere he said, I messed up your life, didn't I? Somewhat. Yeah, I know. Not just my life. Look at what we did to Louis. He started to cry. After this discussion, Melito and his wife agreed to end the marriage. On Valentine's Day 1988, Melito visited his wife, brought her a blue and silver balloon with a heart in the center of it. To quote again from Mafia Wife, Melito said, I know things about this world you don't know and you don't want to know, he said. It's a cold place. You have no idea how cold. But no matter what happens, you have to remember, you are still my sweet girl. You know I love you. Always did. Always will. Can't help it. Melito's body was never recovered, and following his disappearance, with bills piling up, Linda went to Gravano for support. She knew that Melito had gem steel, as well as his Shylock business, which Linda estimated to be worth around $5 million. When asked about it, Sammy told her, quote, What Shylock business? He had this calm smirk on his face, as if he were answering a small child. It would later turn out that Gravano had given Melito's Shylock book to Huck Cabanero. Gravano had also taken over Melito's Gem Steel Company and took over $1 million from it. In the end, Gravano gave Linda $5,000 and never spoke to her again.